All right, so let's blame Seth. Uh, who do okay. the, who do the people blame? Twenty seven hundred votes, which for a Pender poll is pretty good. The average Pender poll is somewhere between a thousand and fourteen hundred votes. I'm How a, many was this? This is twenty seven hundred votes. Well, so this is are, yeah. This is something that's moving the people right now. This whole okay. Astros thing. I'm gonna guess. I haven't looked at it. I, I like to not look at your polls. And uh, <laughs> yeah, I, like to I get my eyes from your poll when you look at my poll, and then just get me guess its dimensions. That's it. Thank you. <laughs> I wish you'd guess bigger. Um, Pender poll uh, for Astro fans. Who do you, just simple? Who do you most blame for the team's slow start? Here are the choices: the players, Cranebag okay. interim GM, mm. Dusty Baker, Dana, uh, Dana Brown, and I put Dana Brown in there just to see if there was any because I think Dana Brown is way and he ended up. Not to spoil this one part, Seth, because I knew you weren't going to guess Dana Brown. He only got 1.7% of the vote. I had a few people go, why is Dana Brown even in here? Right, right. Sometimes I put people in there just to see if they're getting undue blame on this. And and, and I would say that Astro fans, they've got Dana Brown in the appropriate spot, which is under 2% blame. He inherited a lot of what's wrong with this team. He inherited basically everything that's right and wrong with the team right now. I don't like it when people question, like, why is this even an option? Like, I'm not giving you the answer or anything like yeah. why is that don't vote I for could, it i could put blue fairies in there and it would be like okay you don't have to vote for blue fairies right well the one the one thing i didn't put in here because i wanted to keep it as people were blaming not things yeah. the one reply that i got i'm gonna let you guess here in a second but the one reply that i got that may have been an appropriate one to mix in maybe instead of dana brown is injuries there are a lot of people that said i blame injuries you know bad luck oh yeah yeah, yeah 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 um, yeah which I guess ultimately that goes back to the either that goes back to crane bag. I feel like if it's injuries, because uh, when when it's an injury to like Michael Brantley, who was injured when you signed him and he's Thank old, uh, like that's why the that's McCullers, it's that's that's something you got to account for. Yep. The fact that you have all these young pitchers that you're relying on uh, to, to fill in the hole for a Verlander or whomever, then like, OK, is that a little bit of hubris that goes back to crane bag? Yep. So the so the three that are really that are, that are realistic choices, I guess. The players, Crane Bag, and Dusty. Who do you think the people are blaming in all, in all uh, this? I think that they're blaming Crane Bag. I'll add a Furcus in there, too, just to be sure. <laughs> like, they get the whole milieu. Ultimately, that goes to Crane for me. Because yeah. Crane's Crane was in charge when there was no GM. So, uh, I, I bet they they blame Crane they Bag. Blame Cl- in, in the eyes of Seth Payne, they're blaming Crane Bag. <laughs> ah! A lot of people do blame him. 33.9%. Okay. Finished second. The players are getting the brunt of this by a decent, you know, by a, by a, 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 a not a slim margin, a, a healthy yeah. margin. 41.4% blame the players, 33.9% blame Crane Bag, 23% blame Dusty. And I will say all, I will preface all this, or at least uh, not preface, but uh, add this little nugget, which is that I think there's blame to be spread around with all these, but I can right. see where you point the most of the fingers at the players. Yeah, I'm not uh, I'm not going to criticize the the construction of the poll or anything, Sean. I know sometimes I do that. Mm-hmm. We make this more about the poll writing itself. Uh, and I don't I don't fault that at all. Um, I, I think that when you make it broad in this instance, like when you actually make a huge broad category players like that, I feel like that's when people choose that, I feel like they're punting on it because ultimately, I mean, if you look at it, it's hard to like, if I look at Bregman or I look at like Altuve and where he is right now, look at Jordan Alvarez, Kyle Tucker, those guys have been above average baseball players. Jordan certainly way above average, except he just gets injured too often. Yeah. Um, I don't blame them for the Astros losing 10 of their last 13 you know it, it's just like it, at some point that's not why they're bad right now it'd certainly be better if one of those guys would go on a roll and really spark some things um Abreu Abreu it's hard not to blame just because the fall has been so hard and it's just sometimes it happens I mean I can't it's, it's like blaming father time but that's just where he is right now. I don't think if he were out, if there were reports of him out boozing or something all the time, or that he had just stopped caring, then then I might blame Abreu. But I think this is just it is what it is, and that's what happens when you get to a certain age. And this might be his cataclysmic drop, sparked by a combination of age and him being in a new spot. You got three rookies on the bench. You got Mauricio Dubon, who might be coming back down to earth right now. He's about four for twenty six in his last twenty six. Yeah, it's um. I, I think it's I think it's a lot of it is a lot of guys just being the guys they are with 
potential for juice coming back from a, uh, some guys getting healthy and then either Kyle Tucker or Jose Altuve or Alex Bregman taking off on a run. Yeah, that's you you're going to if if this is if this is what Abreu is, and look, let's face it, we're we're almost halfway through the season. Like this may be what he is. There there is that possibility that this is what he is at this point. They're all star players. They're all star caliber players. I'll say. Uh, you know, you mentioned Altuve, Bregman, Tucker, Jordan. Those are the big ones. Pena. I hesitate to put in that same category as those four guys. Like Tucker. To me, Tucker, Jordan, Alec, Alex Bregman, and Jose Altuve, and I know it's been up and down for Bregman the last few years, but th- those are bona fides. Like those are yeah. all star caliber. If they're on the open market, they get big contract kind of players. Uh, Jordan is already going to be Jordan. I'm not. I'm fine with him. The, the those four. If this is what Abreu is, and and the rest of the lineup, if there's such a big drop off, then they're going to need to be all stars the rest of the year to get back in this. To, you know, to to. To compete in the AL, well, they're six and a half back now. You know they're yeah. they're gonna they're gonna need they're gonna need to be better. And I know it's it's tough. Like Altuve had an eight forty five OPS yesterday when I said Altuve's got to be better. He's like, sorry, he makes thirty million dollars and he's on a team that is having a really hard time hitting the baseball right now. Heavy is the head that wears the crown, man. He he's got to be better. It's I just honestly, as one of the listeners points out, it's just this is one of those things that are so absurd, Sean, and it's just so weird. I think sometimes we forget how weird it is. It's just the firing of the GM after the World Series. Yeah. I like, and I know there's a, I know there's more to it than just on the surface. But let's look at that from the surface level. Just that, in 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 a lot of ways, a lot of times, uh, you know when. When guys get fired in sports, it's because nobody wants to believe that just standing pat can be the right thing to do, and that sometimes uh, you don't don't be active just for the sake of act- showing activity. I think Crane, uh, Click was a guy that was very much comfortable just standing pat at times. A couple of the moves that he made obviously could have worked out better, um, but they weren't devastating blows or anything, and they ended up winning a World Series. Like he, he trusted in the pitching staff when it was – you know, Javier, when it was Framber, when it was those guys coming up yeah. and, and it worked out very well. Yep. This, they got rid of click and I don't, I don't know if click would have trusted all of these guys to the level that, that Dana Brown and Clickbag did, but we will never know. Yeah. I, um, well, I, I certainly, I think some of the moves that they made post click and pre Brown were moves that, that James click would not have made. Yeah. Uh, he would not have given Rafael Montero $11 million. I promise you that. Like there's no way he's giving a setup guy. 11, a setup guy who had one good season, eleven million bucks. I, I think he would have. There's a good chance he would have trusted the pitching. And look, look, Luis Garcia and Jose Urquidy getting injured is. That, I mean, that's if you want, if you're arguing for injuries, like that's the biggest one. Where if you're, I'm sitting here blaming Crane or the ghost of James Click or Dana Brown for pitching when the truth of the matter is Urquidy and Luis Garcia being injured was uh, a, a huge blow that to sucks. the team. Yep, it sucks. All right, so I'm glad you brought this up because I was thinking about this during the game last night. Do you think if they keep sliding here, is there a chance Dusty Baker gets fired? <sighs> Okay, and uh, and and, and wonder, I and I think yeah. there's a I, I think there's a possibility it happens, Seth, and I think it's because he's we know we know Dusty's not the long term manager here. He's year to year. We didn't he he won the World Series and we didn't know if he was coming back this year. You know, and, and some of that's him. He just turned seventy four. He may not want to he may not want to manage till he's eighty or whatever. But I don't yeah. think he's ever been viewed as a long term long term guy here. And his, he's making – some of these lineup decisions he's making, man, like he's, he's making a lot of very questionable decisions with with what he's been – It's well, I get it. He's been dealt a rough hand with the injuries and whatnot. That does not excuse the some of the, the lineup decisions of not getting his best offensive team out on the field when he can. The overuse yeah. of guys like Corey Jolks, the insistence on, on, on batting guys in certain spots in the lineup – there's no, there's no way that right now Jose Abreu should be batting ahead of Yiner Diaz in the lineup. Yiner Diaz is one of their best hitters right now, and for some reason, you know Abreu's cleanup and Yiner Diaz is fifth. It's a little thing, but in what you hope are games that are a lot closer than the ones they've been playing in lately, that's the type of decision that can end up losing game for you in the eighth or ninth inning. He's he's made a lot of very questionable decisions, and this is a team that might need a shot in the arm at some point, and sometimes the shot in the arm is a new voice, and I just think there's a chance it could happen. Yeah, I think the, the pitching decisions, too, and I'm always, yeah. I'm always hesitant to, to question a lot of pitching decisions. Um, 
it's very easy for it's very easy to second guess what happens afterwards, whether if you'd left the guy in or if you had pulled him earlier. Uh, and yet, like in a game like last night. Yeah, you know, as one of the listeners points out, leaving Stanek in for one pitch, uh, you know, and pitching, uh, getting a third of an inning uh, instead of like just having meet some innings. I, I don't know. Stanek, Stanek's coming off the bereavement list, so I don't like. I could, I could make an excuse that maybe there's just more to it that he doesn't want to leave Stanek out there and have him potentially give a a rough show or outing based on routine or just even emotional level. I don't know. Um, but I, uh, I, yeah, like that's just it's you just stack them up one after the other yeah. after the other. Could they actually pull the trigger on it? I don't think they would. I think they might use it as an excuse to fire him at the end of the season. Maybe. I, I like, just... is, is Crane the type of guy to kind of just look at it? Like, okay, right now the Astros have, according to Fangraphs, a 19% chance of winning the division. They <sighs> are, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, we've lived in a world where that's a percentage chance of them winning the World Series the last few years. Right. 19%. Well, like, yeah, I would be reminding people, like, hey, listen, I know it seems easy and everything, but they're only they're only a twenty four percent chance to win the World Series Dude, right now. Nineteen percent to win the damn AL West. Wow, this is new territory. I, I, you know, that was one of the depressing stats that Chandler Rome gave me that had me in a funk this morning. Yeah. I look. Yes, you just pointed out. I mean, this is what made me think of it, Seth. As you just pointed out. They let a GM go that just was the GM for a team that won the whole thing. <laughs> you know, like yeah. it is. I think. I think with Jim Crane, everything's on the table. Um, right. And, and this, and we, they may reach a point where it's. It feels like it's the only way to save the season. I mean, they are in a title window, so they're not gonna. I don't think Jim Crane's gonna wait to do anything. If you look around, if he looks around and says, "Okay, what are our solutions here?" You know, your Jordan's back and he's hitting again. And we've got everybody back who's back. Your Kitty's back, but they're still maybe not winning. They're hovering around 500. They're not making any headway in the playoff race. I mean, if it's September and you're doing that, then I, I, if it were to happen, it would probably be one of those things that happened like at the All Star break. You know, you look and see what the chances are of a run in the second half. But I think yeah. it's I think it's on the table. I don't think it's a favorite. I don't think it's going to happen. But I don't think, like, as you like to say. Definitely a non-zero percent chance of it happening it's, for sure. It's uh, I don't like to say that. I just don't despise it the way you, I only like saying it the non-zero chance because you despise it so much. Uh, <laughs> there's a non-zero. There's certainly a non-zero percent, non-zero percent chance of uh, the, the the Astros firing Dusty Baker. Yeah. When I start thinking about that though, it's kind of like when you know there's a dog that needs to be put down, and you're like, Phew. intellectually, I know that the dog should be put down, but I certainly don't want to be the one that does it. Right. So. Right. I say that as a person who's put down a few animals. I've done my duty, Sean. If they need me to fire Dusty Baker at some point, uh, I'll be that guy. Okay. Uh, they can hire me to come in. I'll only ask low six figures to it, I think Jim, and uh, I'll let him down gently. I think Jim Crane can handle it. I think, I think he's perfectly cool handling <laughs> stuff was, like that. Look, what do you guys want from me? I, I, I let James Click enjoy himself. For a few days after the World Series, even as he knew he was probably in trouble. Literally. Jim Crane, Jim Crane might have sadistically like let him dangle there for three, three days, four days. Dude, he let he him dangle him. at the general manager's meetings. <laughs> I let him go and be a dead man walking in front of all of his peers right. at the GM meetings. Exactly. What, what more do you want from me? Ex yeah. Exactly. Exactly. People weighing in on this. Trailer wheel and frame text page 4854 or 4864. God, fire him. Uh, <laughs> fire his ass. Um, and then the opposite here, six, three, seven, nine, they won't fire dusty. There's too much respect. If he's done, it'll be a quote yeah. mutual parting of the ways initiated by the Astro. I agree. And I agree with Seth. If it happens, it happens after the season. If it's a super disappointing season, I guess if you kind of, if you look at it and look at where you are with injuries that you did the, the pitcher injuries, especially, um, and if, if. You get further down the road, and it looks like, man, okay, the, the chances of a comeback here are really big. Like, uh, firing the manager is not likely going to be the one. This isn't firing some D-bag that everybody hates or something right. to where immediately there's an infusion uh, of energy into the clubhouse. I guess the one thing that I would say is, man, the, uh, the regularity with which this team is making, def making errors on defense uh, is – is really alarming and not what we're used to seeing. <laughs> That's the one part where I'd say, like, I try to be a new age baseball stats guy that says the managers don't make all that much difference, but sometimes I like, they're just not dialed. No, no, I don't, I don't know what you do to justify your salary as a baseball manager, but this has got to be one of the things that get them to stop playing like haphazard morons. Dude, the, the, right? I don't know if you, I don't know if you kept watching in the ninth inning when they left that poor Dubin kid in to just get yeah. shelled. The, the outfielders look drunk. 
like Jake Myers and Chaz McCormick were playing like they were drunk. The ball's bouncing off their legs and rolling to the wall. and It was crazy. Dusty, have you considered not allowing alcohol in the dugout? Yes, in the dugout. Well, exactly. Let me tell you a story about uh, 1953. Yeah, there's no keg stands at second base. It's not softball.